All right, hello. Um, I'm gonna try, and I don't, you can't really see me. Let's go here. I'm gonna try and uh, uh, skin this dogfish, which apparently, and from what I've seen, is really difficult to do. Uh, so this is a, uh, I'm going on TA Fishing and the Fish Locker. Uh, the only two people that I've seen skinning them. Uh, catch and cook style. So this is what this is. Um, yeah, check check those guys out because uh, TA fishing uh, is great. Uh, loads and loads of fish and stuff, like tons and tons and tons. Loads of info, great information. And uh, same with fish locker, foraging, shoreline foraging, fishing, pots, lobsters, crabs. You name it, just to do with the sea. Uh, both of those guys pretty much will give you loads of insight Give me loads of insight and we got the tools Got this knife uh, Which is my open L stainless and I've got an open L carbon as well actually which is there Because uh, they're great man really thin blade. I've got I'm into bushcraft and stuff. So I've got some really chunky knives they're too big to do anything with like yeah if you were surviving uh, you can chop a tree down with it but uh, I've got one knife which is my favorite which is uh, only three mil thick use it for everything uh, it's not full tang um, but it's great like this it's just a brilliant knife uh, and this this is, this is in my pocket all the time stainless steel take this into the beach I did have another knife up until today uh, you will see that I was using it earlier maybe to chop up bait and apparently I left it down the beach on the rocks so pretty disappointed but anyway uh, the, the the crabs are in the freezer bottom drawer uh, again I've seen uh, a few people cooking those um, I've got a pan on the stove with salt and some vinegar uh, heavily salted uh, smash fishing, brilliant foraging, uh, real inspiration really to get outside and go and find your own food for free. Lives in Guernsey, so he's a lucky, lucky guy. Massive tides. I'm on the Isle of Wight. We get like two meter tides, uh, tide range, really, really small, uh, really weird. Uh, he gets like 12 meters. So when a tide goes out, you know, stuff that's under the rocks. He's getting lobsters every time, spider crabs, you name it, man. He's finding it. And cooking it on the beach, great. So that's been a good thing. So this is, I'm going to cook the crab as he does, really. Uh, apart from the freezer thing that I've seen somewhere else. I don't know where I've seen that. Uh, and Hayes Outdoors, uh, he's always going to the beach. He's into bushcraft. He likes to drink. Massive brilliant sense of humor uh really really uh fun guy to watch uh hasn't got as many followers as so many other people and he really really should he's got his own brew man he's he's great um he uh so yeah i've seen him cooking up a uh, crab on a beach uh yeah so gonna cook some crab gonna try and skin this dogfish dogfish i'm gonna put in the fridge for tomorrow crab i'm gonna pick but I'll do that later and probably maybe come back to that, show you that, and then that'll be it. Anyway, right, so let's get to it. What's that about? Mate, the nerves in the, these dogfish is insane. Because uh, it's got no guts. It's been dead for about an hour. And it still wants to move so I might do that in a minute and come back because I don't think many people will appreciate watching me trying to skin a dogfish that's still moving even though it's dead okay uh, stop moving so that's cool uh, so I'm gonna try and uh, I think from memory I haven't seen this done for uh, probably a couple of weeks uh, because fish locker put one up so as far as I'm aware you go through 
take the fins off, you put a bit of a V-notch up here. Um, it's still moving, man. What the hell is that about? Um, a V-notch with your knife, get your grips, and just pull the skin off. Sounds easy. From what I've seen, it's not. Let's give it a go. Right, uh, one thing. Yeah, you're still gonna do that, huh? Yes, you take these off as well. Can't really remember. Man, that's not right, is it? Well, sorry guys, I did not um, anticipate this to be on the wriggle. I mean, I've, I've seen, when I was a kid, I caught an eel, like when I was really young, and that thing was wriggling outside, man, for like a day, like after it was dead. Uh, much to my mum's um, disapproval, because we never ate it anyway, do you know what I mean? It was so wrong. I was like eight or something, nine. Left a night line out in a quarry, caught an eel, took it home, killed it left it in a bag out on the doorstep because it was still wriggling and everyone was too scared to do anything with it so right fins off and i'm thinking basically where the meat is i mean there's meat right up here so let's take that to there i guess it's not going to be easy man do these come off all right let's do the Mate, this is tough as, and this knife, I'm not kidding, this knife, I can shave with this knife. They say it's gonna need a bit of a sharpen after we, we're done here. Okay, now we're, now we're getting somewhere. Let me move around. Can I see me? Right, uh, one thing I will say, um, I've, gutted quite a few fish in my life and I've never quite seen anything so, so gross as what's inside a dogfish right that's our skin cut all the way around then they do a bit of a a thing here to get a bit of a bit of a lip to grab hold of which we've got and then you get your dirty dish cloth towel tea towel that you chuck in your fishing bag grab it by the head and give the skin a yank and we'll see how that goes I don't think this is gonna be easy, but oh mate! Oh shoot! That's a lot tougher than I thought. That is crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> well, we got it. Come on, baby. Ah, oh, you son of a gun! Wow! What's occurring here, man? I'm gonna give that a slice down there because I reckon that's gonna help it to come to come off. Now, sure, everybody knows, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Uh, the Victorians used to use dogfish skin as sandpaper because it's that bloody rough, man. Come on. Not happening. I can't see how these guys can ever get this off in one hit, man. Here we go. Multiple. Multiple. You come in. 
Uh, apparently these have got cartilage in them, no bone. So I'm gonna have to look up a, uh, a recipe because um, I want to get as much meat off of this and do it justice, you know. So I don't plan on filleting it. There we go. I yeah, I don't plan on filleting it because I, I want to get every bit piece of meat off. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim the tail off there. I'm gonna have a look at, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just sort of chop it up, maybe to stick it in a curry or something. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, let's get that off. Yeah, interesting to see. Yeah. So there is. Oh, there is. There seems like a bone, but I mean, I can pick pick it out. Uh, obviously, you're gonna have something going on here. Who oh, knows? I'll look it up. See what the best advice is. Anyway, let's take this off here. Um, I'm assuming that that, that head, uh, tail, I've, I've left the guts outside, we'll stick it all in the freezer, all in a lump, that I'm going to say is going to go back in a pot. Use it all up, I don't know if the, uh, the crabs will dig it or not, but I'm going to chuck it in there and we'll see what happens, because that's cool, it's free. It's free bait to catch more food. It's kind of an endless thing. If I can catch one of these once a week, I can chuck that in the pot. I can get some crabs. If I get another one, great, I've got more bait. Cool. I'll come back in a minute. Uh, water's boiling. Crabs are in the freezer. They've only been in for about half an hour. So I'll whip them out uh, when I'm done. And we're done. Uh, chuck them in and yeah cool anyway cheers bye all right uh, it's been over an hour um, so I'm gonna get these crab in the pot I might pick the bone up and show you it's gonna whack them in close the lid come back in 10 minutes 8 to 10 minutes uh, just to show you what they look like when they're cooked and then get them out uh, leave them cool and then I'll come back when I start picking them. Alrighty. That's, uh, it's always a bit of an issue. Getting the phone the right way around. This is the problem using a phone all the time. Okay, so as you can see, they're not moving. They've been in there over an hour. So, straight in. Two. Three, four, in the pot. That's it, whack that on full, let that come back to the boil, and then uh, we'll be good to go, uh, yeah, when they're cooked. There we go, changing color already, doesn't take long. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to give them 10 minutes and then come back. Hello. Um, so, and you can see that those crabs are all cooked up. 8 to 10 minutes is what I was supposed to cook them for. Uh, about 15 is what I ended up doing because I ended up looking at the videos that I'd already taken. And I got distracted. So they probably cooked a little bit too long. I'm hoping this will be alright. They certainly look all right. They smell great. I mean, they smell straight to the sea, which is always good. Um, yeah, so I'll basically what I'll do is I'll run through one, kind of half, and then uh, yeah, and then that, and that'll kind of be it really. And then I'll, I'll just the next time you see it, it'll all be in a bowl, uh, and I'll be cooking something with it or sticking it in a sandwich. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, starving, but anyway. Right, so. So we'll take the, the, uh, all the claws off. Now, I, I don't know if for every, you know, there's a bit of meat in that. But what I tend to do is to take the meat out of these. This is what I did last time. And you got that. 
there that's one of the smaller legs so you've got a big chunk there that's quite a decent sized bit of meat I didn't really bother doing these ones maybe I'll do it this time I don't know uh, and obviously you've got the claw which has obviously got big the big bit of meat in so I'll just get all these off a minute just really so I can show you uh, I'll give this one a quick dap let's get a bowl uh, one thing you'll have to be careful of when you're doing these and uh, I only notice you know when you, you, you snap the, the limbs and and you get these bits come out the little fibery bits Let me zoom like focus on that fuck's sake um, and yeah they're, they're alright but the, there's one inside the claw and if you chew on that you know about it it's like chewing on glass and we didn't realise, you know, you do that and you think, right, cool, oh yeah, look, oh cool, it's out. No, it's not, there's more in there, you got to check it. <laughs> right. Uh, I use the back of the handle, because when I did it before, I found it, oh man, I found it, um, I smashed it to bits. I've got a feeling, because I've overcooked this. It might stick, stick to the shell a bit more, I don't know. But yeah, basically what we ended up doing is a, we, we picked it all and then just run my fingers through it all. You know, just rubbing it in your fingers just to find any bits. Because I didn't do that the first time. And I had a like, first bite of, of uh, what's supposed to be a really nice home pork crab sandwich and um, it, it wasn't a good experience uh, so basically yeah, what I'm going to do pick it all and then I'll run my fingers through it just to make sure there's no little bits of shell in there because it, it's not it's not a nice experience to to chew on the shell wicked and yeah just, we'll just make sure we get all, all the bits of meat and all of that so that's part of the claw anyway I'm not going to do it all I just want to do a bit really just to show you and they're really fiddly they're you know they're, they're not the biggest crab in the world the claws aren't the biggest claws in the world the legs aren't the biggest legs in the world yada yada uh, okay right so now we've got the uh, the the body which is where most of the meat Meat is a, to be fair. Let's move this over here so you can actually see. So I'm just gonna pull pull the little thingy off. That means it's a male. Got a they're all males, I think. Yeah, so basically this got this little flap. If that's pointy, it's a male. See that? If that's pointy, it's a male. If it's rounded, it's a female. But anyway, so that's and then once you've got that, it makes it really easy to, to, to pick the shell. I might take some of the brown meat out of it this time. Didn't take any of the brown meat last time because I thought, well, it was all a bit mank. But I uh, took the brown meat out of the edible crabs, the brown crabs. And it was great, man. It was strong. Did we take the brown meat out of these last time? I think we might have. I don't know. So, yeah. So, I pulled that off. Pulled the little mouthy bits off. These are the, what do they call them, like dead man's fingers. Feathers. I don't know why. Well, people don't eat it. But see, there's that's brown meat. I'm having that. Like I say, you know, this thing's given up a lot for me to eat it. So I'm gonna make sure I I eat it all. Right, so you snap it, snaps in half basically. Let's get rid of that. Let's get, bring that over because I'm going I'm to be here for for a while doing this. So you snap it in half, and you get all these little compartments. Look, big, with nice, nice chunks. Look, pull that out. But what you got to be really careful of is this shell in here, like in in the body, is so brittle. So again, when you've done it, just run your fingers through. 
just run your fingers through all the, all the, the meat, you know, through your fingertips. You'll feel if there's any bits of shell in there. But you can see, I mean, yeah, it looks like I'm not going to get loads. I'm not, I, you know, I haven't really even started on, on this one yet. Uh, and you'd be quite surprised. There'll be enough to make pasta for two people, easy. Out of these four. Um, but I think today we're eating solo. So it's all going to be man. Anyway, I'm going to carry on doing this. And uh, when you come back, there's going to be... A whole heap of crab. Cheers. All right. Whoa, what's going on here? Uh, oh, there we go. That's better. Don't have to bend down so much. Uh, we're all done. No idea what the time, how long that took. I'd say it's quite a while. Maybe an hour. Um, it's quite fiddly. They're quite small. I don't know what it was. If it was the um, overcooking it, the shell inside the main structure of the body was a lot softer this time uh, and it, and there's a bit more moisture in the meat as well so I think it's the overcooking that's the only thing I can assume but as you can see even still we've got a pretty decent amount of meat really you know I mean four crabs that's easily would make pasta for two people enough meat in it to make a really nice quiche uh, which would feed four people you know if you're cutting it up into quarters but yeah I mean look, and you can see like some of the like, some of the chunks that's like the knuckle part in the claw um, these are all the bits in the legs I mean but I, I don't understand why people would say they wouldn't it's not worth getting the meat out of the legs in them because it really is uh, and then all I do go through it like that um, just trying to feel any bits of shell and also it mixes in the brown meat because I did take the brown meat out of the shells that's the flavour I mean what's the point like oh not eating the it's like not eating thigh meat or leg meat on a chicken mate if you're going to kill it eat it uh, yeah so little mini rant over that doesn't feel like there's any shell so going in the fridge and that is going to be eaten tomorrow or later I don't know tomorrow I'll get a menu done up a menu <laughs> I'll cook something with it <laughs> cheers